Just be warned, this is a true DIY job. Hey guys, I have a confession to make. At home I stream my music using Alexa devices, I also pay for the subscription service as well, despite having a sizable music library and the skills to implement it in a different way. I quickly find out that uh, streaming via Blex wasn't really working for me because of uh, elaborate commands and, well, let's face it, it's convenient and I'm just lazy. But there was one more reason why I never really looked into it, because up until now multi-room wireless audio was something that was usually associated with a high price tag. At least that's why I thought. Until our relic reached out and said like, hey, look at these, we have a DIY board that you can use to set up your own multi-room wireless audio solution. And it won't cost you that much. There was a one problem though, I needed speakers. Thankfully, the majority audio was also interested and they've sent me two sets of speakers so I could prove my point that you can do multi-room wireless audio on a budget. So what's wrong with Alexa? Well, it's complicated. First of all, it's a subscription service that you have to pay every month, which isn't ideal. I pay for Amazon Prime anyway, so that's kind of included, but a big chunk of that music isn't even included in a subscription, but that's beyond the point. And I know in the past I did say that Alexa like, third generation speakers are one of the best sounding speakers that you can get for about £20 because that's how much you have to pay for them and it will enable you to listen to the music in the different regions of your house so you can set up your multi-room audio groups etc. And for that price they were really hard to beat. But what really makes me annoyed, apart from the fact that I'm already paying for access to music that I already have, is the fact that every time I ask Alexa to play some music, it gets conversational with me, which is simply, it's just, it's doing my heading. Play some music. Amazon Music is streaming on another device. Would you like to stream from here instead? Yes. Here's a station you might like, my soundtrack on Amazon Music. Play music on upstairs group. Here's a station you might like, Upbeat Classics on Amazon Music, playing on the upstairs group. Amazon Music is streaming on another device. Would you like to stream on the upstairs group instead? Yes. And that's just a sample. Music sessions are also time limited, so every now and then you'll have to restart the entire process. And more often than not, instead of listening to music, I end up having a conversation with a with AI, which sounds like a really annoying teenager full of opinions. So how Aurelic changes that? Well, they have a selection of DIY solutions for your music needs. And by DIY, I really mean DIY because, well, let's face it, this is a one of the devices and I had to really find the closure for it and 3D print that one. So it's gonna be a bit of work, but in exchange what you get, it's a really clever system that you can use at your home without breaking your bank. I've received two up to stream Pro version 3.0 boards which don't come with amplifier but they are able to handle multiple protocols, they have a quite rich I.O. and I'll be able to take advantage of the Arelic API to control these boards and set up my own way of controlling multi-room wireless audio, which is awesome. Chances are that if you are interested in this topic you already have a nice music collection on your hard drive ready to be streamed. But that's not the only options, as the four stream app that Arelic uses to stream the music to their devices includes also subscriptions from most popular streaming services like Amazon Prime, Spotify, etc. etc. Before you make your final selection, you probably want to spend some time on the Arelic website to pick the board and modules that you need for your setup, because there are different modules, and for example, this one doesn't come with amplifier, hence me reaching out to Majority Audio and asking for help. And while majority audio speakers are, well, perfectly working on their own without our elite boards, well, they don't offer multi-room solutions, so having one of these, it's a match made in heaven. 
So the first set from Majority Audio are the Bookshelf Speakers D40, which retail for around $70. And they are quite nice speakers, they will blend in in any environment, they are connected via a uh, cable, so uh, 1.5 meter cable so you can stretch them across, and they come with included remote for ease of control, which probably you're not going to use since we're going to have a smart controls from Arelic. Now, the speakers itself, they come with their own interface, so you can connect them via Bluetooth, you can connect them via AUX or um, optical, and they also come with the ability to read the files directly from a USB stick or microSD card, which can come handy. The second set of speakers that they've sent to me to hook up to my other Arelic board and create a wireless audio was the Dolby Atmos certified the soundbar with separate subwoofer, wireless subwoofer, and that's a Sierra Plus. That is slightly more expensive, it's uh, retailing for about £270 instead, but, well, it packs a pound. The interface for this is even more rich, because apart from Bluetooth, AUX in and optical, you also have the support for HDMI and HDMI ARC. And if that's not enough, they also come with USB as well. And frankly speaking, I had them connected to my projector downstairs for a cinema-like experience, and it was great. I have used my projector, which is uh, reviewed in here. Awesome experience, so thanks very much. Now, off to the multi-room wireless setup. In effect, just listen to yourself. And now if you want to listen to what it actually sounds from those stairs all the way from here, you can do that too, which is impressive on those speakers. I can feel the flow vibrating. This is loud. Okay, perhaps I don't have the best TV stand. <laughs> I haven't got around of getting one in like five years. But at least I've got a really decent sound right now. which either can be synchronized from the sound upstairs, or I can play different tracks in different rooms. When I first received my Arelic boards, the Aptus Stream Pro 3.0, they came in those uh, clear cases with instructions. And there's something I should really mention, that the instruction was outdated and I received a support email explaining that uh, mapping of the bottom has changed. So let's quickly go over the board itself and uh, let's figure out what's what and what you can do with it and then we're gonna hook it up, connect it and test it. Let's talk about I.O. because it's uh, quite impressive. So first we have a Wi-Fi and the antenna is in here. That's the built-in antenna which isn't really connected right now because we're using this one for the Wi-Fi and we have a separate connector for Bluetooth antenna if you want to make it happen. Next up, uh, we have a LAN. If you prefer it to use the wired connection, this is 10 megabit connection. So it's uh, plenty for music, so I don't complain. Then we have a USB, which you can use to either store um, content on, or connect a drive or something, or you can also use the USB pass-through for this board and connect it to the computer, and it will be acting as a sound card. Next up, we have uh, AUX in and AUX out, so you can either provide a source for the music and output for your speakers. And then micro USB for power. I wish that was a USB Type-C, but it is what it is. And a separate terminal for power as well, in case you want to use a different way of connecting it. In front we have an infrared receiver for remote controls and LEDs for different inputs. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB and aux in. Now you are probably wondering what are these slots for? Now, I've mentioned previously that you could use different add-ons to improve this board even further. So that's how you can take advantage of it. This is this is a socket for the optical um, connectors, so you can add your optical shield to it. In here you can actually hook up to those GPIOs and receive information about the board, including uh, controlling the board from the buttons, etc. You'll find additional information on our Relic website. And uh, those two boards are uh, aux in and out, so you can connect uh, your audio through these instead of the jacks, and a couple of extra GPIOs that you can take advantage of. 
the actual hardware hookup will strongly depend on what type of audio you've got in your house. As I'm using majority speakers, I'm going to be demonstrating on that, but if you have different interfaces to connect, you might want to refer to the manual to make sure you've got correct cables. I mean, Arillic boards, they have enough input and output out there to satisfy even the most demanding people. There are only a couple of things that you should really be aware of, and the setup's going to be non-problematic. First of all, connect speaker to this board. Entering setup mode. Follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. Seriously, it's going to talk to you while you're setting up, and that's going to make it so much easier. Now, make sure you have a nice power supply. I had a power supply that wasn't that good, and I couldn't really power the board properly, and I experienced lots of problems. Lastly, check for the firmware updates and make sure that all your boards are on the same firmware. That's going to be vital when you're trying to set up your multi-room wireless audio. If your boards are on a different firmware, they might actually have problems with that and up until I updated both boards to the same firmware level, I couldn't establish it. Oh, by the way, if you received also the outdated instructions for some reason, go to my website. I will include the uh, proper mapping for the current firmware for the bottom 4, Arelic, up to Stream Pro version 3. That way, you're not going to be lost. For my setup, I use 3.5mm aux in to send the music to my device. You can also use uh, Bluetooth with majority speakers, but just bear in mind if you use the Bluetooth and you're connecting them to a computer, you might have a small delay between the video and the audio. It is something I come across and that's why I opted out for 3.5mm jack in that case. When you're ready, press the button once to select the proper input channel, in this case Wi-Fi because that's what you want to set up. Press the button twice again to enter the setup mode and open for stream app. You'll start scanning and it'll promptly connect to your wireless device, or in this case, a relic up, up to stream Pro 3.0. Enter your Wi-Fi credentials, it uses 2.4 GHz network, and that's pretty much it, you're gonna be connected. Once in the app, you can then select your player and select the streaming services that you have a subscription for or access to and stream directly from them. Any music that is directly stored on the phone or in DLNA server, it will depend on the compatibility. Repeat this for every Arelic board and soon enough you're gonna have a list of all devices connected to your local network and you'll be able to start streaming. You can either send the music stream to individual devices or you can tap them and add them to a single group and send the same music to all of your uh, Arelic boards. Now that everything works great, let's talk about a couple of things that you probably should be aware. And let's start with Force Stream app. While it works great, I can't resist the impression that it looks a bit dated, especially if you log into your streaming services. Now, I've used Amazon Prime and it just looks like something made in 90s which isn't the best look, guys. So yeah, I hope they're gonna revamp this and make it slightly better, but it is usable, so I'm not going to question that part of it. Next up, it doesn't really have an integration with smart speakers, so you can't really issue voice commands, which are quite handy. Each time you want to start a playback, you'll have to open the app and set it up there. And the last point is, are you actually getting just a PCB? I mean, I found this online and I printed it out. It's slightly oversized, doesn't expose really the lights, and. It's a case I would redesign as well, but Arelic itself, they come with a small acrylic case, which doesn't look very good, but you know, it'll save you in a pinch. But this is where Arelic is very open about it and say like, look, this is a DIY solution and expect to put in the work. After all, they expose a lot of different things to you so you could start working the way you want. But in all Arelic defense, they are offering a DIY solution and they expect you to put in some works. So you have to be aware of that. Now, the case aside, they do offer a Relic API, which basically is a whole set of API, how to connect to the device, how to obtain the information about the current uh, media being played, and how to basically control the device, including creating your own groups, multi-room setups, and uh, controlling the playback. This is where you can actually build custom controls, custom controllers, and custom setups for your smart automation, including dashboard buttons for your home assistants, etc., because all of that is baked into API. As there are no official ready solutions, you'll have to do your research and come up with creative ways, but that opens a possibility to create a truly unique wireless audio solution for your home. You could integrate that into Node-RED or Home Assistant. You can create music controllers basically from anything that connects to the internet and uh, you'll be able to pass the commands 
to the board itself. All of that is really exciting, but you'll have to have time to figure it out and do it yourself. I can use devices like this Symphonisk remote that I used it previously to control Spotify, and I can implement this knowledge to actually start controlling my Arlic devices, and even write a small script that will handle voice commands from Alexa and let you use voice controls for that board. It's all possible, it will just take time. So if you already have speakers at home and you want to make them smarter, then you can pick up a Relic board and add it to your setup. If you don't and you want to get some speakers with it, uh, the Bookshelf Speakers D40 were fantastic for this purpose and uh, it only brings the price up to £130 for a setup with a board and a speak pair of speakers itself, which is actually not too expensive if you consider alternative in terms of uh, wireless multi-room setups. And if you really want to go posh and have something with a kick, then Soundbar with a dedicated uh, subwoofer sounds great. I really hope you enjoyed that dive into our Relic wireless multi-room setup. And big thanks to our Relic and the majority of audio for making it possible and letting me talk about their devices together and testing it out for you. So if you're interested, guys, as usual, I'm going to include all the links and information and links to the products in the description of this video. You'll also find the article and should I find some time to redesign the case, I'm gonna include the link to this one. Uh, then I'm gonna post this as well in that article, so do check it out for the latest information. As for now guys, well, I do not have a posting schedule so you know how YouTube works. So subscribe, bring a button, you know how it works, I'm not going to explain you that. But take your time and effort and follow me on any given social media, because this is the best way of keeping in touch and starting a conversation. Especially if you have a links, because YouTube likes to block them. As for now, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.